Hey, welcome to Dish Nation. Today we got a sexy model showdown. We hit the Mad Max red carpet and giving birth just got even better. We'll tell you how you can win big money in the delivery room. Many are calling Charlotte McKinney the next Kate Upton. Really? But Charlotte's all like, hey, don't get it twisted, yeah. yo. Now, Charlotte's trying to make a name for herself after doing a Carl's Jr. commercial. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, buddy. And about two seconds on Dancing with the Stars. And so, naturally, people are starting to say, hey, you have big boobs. You're blonde. You kind of look like Kate Upton. So, when she was doing her Twitter chat, somebody asked her about that. And she said, I'm over it. I believe we're two different people, and we have different career paths. If you're on two different career paths, why are you going the same place? Exactly. Right. <laughs> I mean, let's take a look, Big Al Mac. Yeah, they right. both starred in a oh. Carl's Jr. commercial. They have both modeled for guests. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. They're both white. They're both blonde. Mm hmm. They both have humongous natural breasts. Yes. Ooh, those are some big ones. Now, Charlotte has said she wants to start acting. Kate Upton has already established an acting career. Oh, boy. Kind of. Stellar. <laughs> Charlotte was on Dancing with the Stars. Uh-huh. Kate Upton did the Dougie on camera and then followed it up with the Cat Daddy. And they both like to be topless. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If Charlotte starts dating a Detroit Tiger, I mean, come it's on. It's over. <laughs> it's done. I think comparisons are a tricky thing, especially with celebrities. Mm -hmm. You know, you get it. You know who you look like? Or, gosh, you could be the next whoever. You just got to... Take it. Take it as right. a compliment. Yeah. I don't care who they're comparing me to if it's someone that is considered to be very beautiful and is very successful even if i don't think i'm anything like her right thank you al who would you like to be the next who the, the next ricky smiley duh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you and ricky have such completely different career paths he's a movie star uh -huh. yeah. right. he's a stand-up comedian he's right. talented he's funny very handsome you're nothing alike uh i'm right here <laughs> <laughs> y'all looks like change is on the horizon you know leonardo dicaprio right yeah. right i mean this dude has been getting into the action since the 90s and mm -hmm. i ain't talking about movie action i'm talking lady action exactly and he has a whole crew of dudes who rolls with him and kind of reap the benefits of being leonardo dicaprio's homeboy right well here's the thing it looks like there might be a problem within the committee because a recent picture was posted the night of the mayweather pacquiao fight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was posted to kevin Connolly's instagram account and leonardo has a star over his face oh, oh. did he tell them to put the star there? Nobody knows. No one knows what's going on. How is he going to let everybody else represent the kitty committee but him? Exactly. It's all about him because if it wasn't for him, there would be no committee. Oh, well, well, there's no. a couple other big dogs in the crew. I mean, you got uh, Lucas Haas, Toby Maguire, and uh, there's even a dude from My Name is Earl in the background. <laughs> but still, at the end of the day, whose star is the highest? Leo. Well, he, okay, but this is my thing. If you're the chairman, you're the head of this group, why are you trying to hide? Yeah, that's the thing. Now, is he trying to hide or are they hiding him? Because did he put the star on his face? When you omit Leonardo DiCaprio from the picture, it raises the stock of everybody else in the picture. Exactly. When Leonardo DiCaprio in the picture, is like, oh, snap, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. And some others. Exactly. <laughs> you know, the thing is, it seems like these people wouldn't even really know each other. Even if they don't know each other, I'm going to need them to get their gang signs together because mm -hmm. everybody's throwing up a different sign for a different posse. Well, but what about the guy with the hat on, honey, with the black? I mean, the one with the fingers, like you said, is he... Nah, that's West Side, man. Oh, that's West Side. <laughs> <laughs> now, gang, if you was in a picture, what would your what would your sign be? Oh, uh, what would my sign be? I uh, know what it would be. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, yes. That's my sign. That means yes. They would have had a star over your entire body. No. <laughs> <laughs> So the trailer for the new Vacation movie is out. It's a reboot of the original back in 1983, National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah. I'll admit, when I heard they were doing this, I was a little nervous. Why? But the trailer makes it look really funny. Why? Because I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> So Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo are back as the original Griswolds. Mm -hmm. So this time around, Ed Helms plays his son, Rusty Griswold, and he wants to take his wife, played by Christina Applegate, and their kids to his favorite childhood memory, going back to Wally World. My trip to Wally World when I was a kid was the best time I ever had. So you want to redo your vacation from 30 years ago? This will be completely different. I've never even heard of the original vacation. Doesn't matter. The new vacation will stand on its own. 
Okay. Was that a fun vacation for them? I don't think so, I mean, Jenna. Even in that movie, it was just full of disaster. Yeah. You no, know, don't you look back on some of your fondest childhood memories? And when you're living them, they're, they're always a disaster. But looking back, you're like, oh, that was some of the best oh, times so of my life. cool, yeah. Yeah, I think my dad had a lot of fun on vacations with <clears throat> other women. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, dang. Wow. I mean, the original movie in 1983 was a little risque, but this one's just flat out dirty. Yeah. I, I cannot wait. It's so dirty, JC. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm so going to take my son with me and everything. Yeah. You can't take no. your son to see this movie. No. It's too Why? dirty. Why? Yeah, teach me about and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of reboots, last night was the premiere of Mad Max Fury Road, and we were there. And you know who else was there? Who? Mel Gibson. What a surprise, wow. right? Yeah, he was in the original one. And that's really weird because Tom Hardy, who is playing Mel's character, had said that it was very awkward when he met Mel Gibson for the first time. Well, you're taking over such an iconic role. Right. Can he do it justice? It's such a guy movie, but with that said, I won't be anywhere near it. No. What? Uh, what kind of dude are you? I won't. It just, I don't know. It's a guy movie, but I won't go. This is I, that, Mad Max. This is that movie that is a guy movie, and if you're a girl, it's the perfect movie to go to with a guy you're into, because well, he'll love it. But yeah, funny you say that, because this is totally a dude flick. And uh, we actually asked Charlize Theron, as a guy, how do I get my lady to come watch this movie with me? Well, then, yeah, I mean, look, this is not everybody's cup of tea. It's, it, I will say that it is, this, for what the genre is, is, is a very emotionally driven film. Um, the, the world is incredible. It's very uh, visual, and, and I think you can see that from the trailer. But the whole story is really driven by a lot of emotion, and the women are quite powerful in it, so. I think what Charlize was really saying is, uh, I'm in it, and there's some other hot girls in it, too, <laughs> like Rosie huntington Whiteley. Come on. <laughs> The only way my boyfriend can get me to go see this movie is if he proposes at the end. So you're telling me if your boyfriend proposes to you at the end of Mad Max, you're willing to go. How big is the ring? <laughs> <laughs> We have a Dish Nation exclusive. Mm, what's now, going on? Now, Lucy Liu could easily sniff out suspects on a hit show, Elementary, right? Mm -hmm. But there's one thing she does not want to sniff out. What? Perfume. Really? Dish Nation has exclusively learned that she has such a sensitive nose, she has respectfully asked the entire cast and crew to stop wearing any scents while working with her. Uh-uh. I don't see anything wrong with that, because sometimes people have a tendency in public to put on too much perfume. They bathe in they perfume. They bathe in it. Well, I saw it says she tries to make it a rule that nobody wears the scents around her, but she can't actually control it. She asks nicely, but if she comes to the set and she smells someone, you can totally see a nose turn up and a face change. In all fairness, I have read somewhere that she is allergic to really? fragrances. Yes. But yo, they say it's the same thing with Lucy Liu on photo shoots. She hates it, and if possible, she'll put it in writing the day before, so it's not a surprise for people when they show up on the set and get the memo. You know, in this room, I don't think none of us have a certain scent. No, not really. Y'all you know, never you smell know. me? No. no. I really make sure that I put on my Tom Ford every day for you guys so I could smell pleasant. Mm. Well, I don't smell you. Now, you know who does in this room, I know that they're here or have rubbed some lotion on themselves? Who? Ricky. Ricky yeah. makes his own lotion. He puts the Tom Ford inside a lotion, and it will blow you away. So you couldn't work with Lucy Liu? Honey. No. Now, Lucy Liu, it, this is her show, right? Yeah. So she can say who can and cannot, but that says Ricky smiling, so I just have to sit here and be like... <laughs> <laughs> If you guys had an Oscar, where would you keep it? In my garden. In the icebox. I'd make it a belt buckle. Well, those are good answers, but nothing like what Natalie Portman and Matthew McConaughey had to say. I'll tell you where they keep theirs after this. I hope you're enjoying Dallas Week, but head on over to DishNation.com where you can see us all the time. We'll see you next week. y'all it's time for what, what the, the florida? florida now i love dumb criminals but this dude might be the best one yet so a guy by the name of jeff waters who's obviously from florida went into a bank of america monday morning and attempted to cash the check for wait for this 368 billion dollars come on that's it <laughs> Now, tell us that the Jacksonville Bank were immediately suspicious because, I mean, obviously, dude didn't look like he would have a $368 billion check. And also, mm. who does this? 
And did you see what he looks like? You see, but that's the problem. I, I judging think people he's by had how they 300 look. drinks. What if that man is judge drunk? People. So if you thought that was ridiculous, guess what he wanted to do with the money? What? Oh, what? He wanted the $368 billion to open an Italian restaurant. Oh. He says, I had planned to make the restaurant 80 million square feet and able to accommodate it <laughs> 30 million eaters at once. Plus, it was going to totally be underwater so people could look at sharks while they ate. That's right. Oh. Gary, did you teach him how to count? Good yeah. luck. Can you imagine... 30 million people in one restaurant? Can you imagine an 80 million square foot restaurant? <laughs> I was wondering how big that was. That's I mean, a, like, it's big as an island. What, what is that big? It's, uh, I'm thinking probably... the moon. I mean, they promised there would be no math today, but God, dog, that's huge. Man, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It gets worse. Wow. All right, so check this out. When they searched him, he was in possession of bath salts and ninja throwing stars. Oh. <laughs> He oh, he might was... eat the guest. Because oh, you know that bath salt, yeah, it makes oh, you yeah. eat people. Sharks. At the end of the day, this dude has ambition and vision. Yeah. Yes. Jeff, wherever you are, my ninja. <laughs> if you won an Oscar, where would you put it? Ooh, I put it in the mantle right there in my living room with the spotlight shining right on it. <laughs> I put mine in the refrigerator right next to the mustard. I'm not into owning uh, humans. <laughs> who, who am I working with? <laughs> So this is the thing, Natalie Portman, you know, she won an Oscar for her role in Black Swan. Yeah. Right. She says she doesn't know where her Oscar is, and more importantly, she doesn't care. What? She was doing this interview with The Hollywood Reporter, and the person asked her, where do you keep your Oscar? I mean, the most prized possession, you would think, sure, for an actor, right. right? Natalie said, I don't know where it is. I think it's in the safe or something. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. If you think that little of your Oscar, then give it to your mama. Yeah, right? Give it to your daddy. Give it to the ones that paid the bills for you to go to those little snotty acting classes mm -hmm. so you could earn that statue in the first place. Oh, just wait until you hear her reason. Natalie said, I was reading the story of Abraham to my child and talking about, like, not worshiping false idols. That's why it's not displayed on the wall. It's a false idol. What? It's like, right. come on, you're being honored for your acting ability. You're not worshiping it. You're not praying to it. No. You're just appreciating it's it. It's a trophy for your work. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so is her little kid not going to allowed to win baseball trophies or anything like that? Right. It's very bizarre. And on the opposite end of this, which you guys are going to love, if you didn't love Matthew McConaughey enough already, mm -hmm. he was also doing an interview recently where he was asked about his Oscar, and he's on a completely different page than <laughs> Natalie Hurt. I bet he is. He said when his kids asked him what this gold statue was for, Matthew said, I reminded them of the work that I did at that time and said the Academy, the group that's the gold standard in the career I have, deemed that to be excellent work. They said, good job, and we continued to talk about what they learned. Yeah, that's cool. What did they learn exactly? That daddy lost a lot of weight and left me all day? No, that, hard work was, that hard work pays off. Well, Matthew told them what they learned is not that if you go to work, you get a trophy, but if you do something really good today, you can be rewarded for it later. You know what, seriously, if I did have an Oscar, I would have it on a string, and every time you opened my front door, it would hit you in the head. Yeah. <laughs> just, you'd be like, oh, what's that? I'd be like, oh, you just got hit by greatness. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. Good news, ladies. Delivering a baby just got more fun. Excuse me? Yes, Kelly. How would you like to mix the excitement of giving birth with winning cash prizes? I would not like that. Great. I'll tell you all about it next. Just when you thought reality TV couldn't get any weirder, TLC unveils Labor Games. Labor Games? Yeah, yeah, like having a baby? Yeah. That's exactly what it sounds like, Gary. Oh. So Labor Games claims to take viewers where no game show has gone before into the delivery room. And yes, while the women are in labor. Oh. Which of the following musicians has not recorded a studio album, including a song with the word baby in the title? I think it's B. I'm going to say B, too. So you both feel B? Yes. That's the answer you both want to deliver? Yes. I'm going to stop because she's having a contraction. I need some time with her. Oh. My mouth is left wide 
open. During the periods of labor, like, is when women are not really at their most polite and focused. So these chicks are going to be aggressive. And here's how they're doing it. In between contractions, the host gives couples chances to answer trivia questions and play games in order to win, like, a bunch of life-changing prizes for their unborn child, including a $10,000 college fund, which is awesome because it'll put their kids in the right track. That's good for, like, I don't know, a couple books at school. Yeah, just about to say 10000 That's not Ain't even a full much. semester. And then the amount that they charge just to deliver a baby, you, yeah. you come into this world in debt. Right. <laughs> But it seems like this is, like, such a crazy progression in the world of reality TV. I mean, like, you know, what's next? Exactly. What is next? You're in the delivery room. I mean, most women can't even get a sentence out, more or less a game. Well, what about they do a spinoff? And like what? Yeah. Making the baby game. That's called the porn. <laughs> oh. Labor games will encore this Saturday and Sunday on TLC. Scarlett Johansson is not only beautiful, but she can cook. And really? apparently, she knows the way to a man's heart. Really? Mm -hmm. Meatloaf. Who doesn't love meatloaf? <laughs> so, Scarlett lives in France with her husband, Romaine, and their eight-month-old daughter, Rose. And she said, my husband says he fell in love with me when I made him turkey meatloaf, which is so ridiculous and so American. And my husband is French. But I think it was probably the American flavor that hooked him. They say a way to a man's heart, or is it through his heart, is through his stomach? A way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So you believe that? Yes, and it holds the same for me, too. Oh, really? Oh, trust and believe. Ooh. If you feed me a good steak, my it's almost like beer goggles for me. Like, I start looking at the person like, dang, you are kind of hot, you know? Uh, but I think Scarlett Johansson was already in there because, like, she's Scarlett Johansson. Like, she could have been the world's worst cook, and I'm pretty sure this dude would have still rocked with her. Of course uh. he would have. <laughs> You know, sometimes it seems like celebrities are a different species, right? Yeah, but they're just better. Well, one thing we do have in common is that we all have moms. So we talk to a bunch of celebrities and ask them to tell us something funny about their moms. So if you have a mom, you definitely want to see this. It's Mother's Day weekend, and we want to wish all the moms out there a happy Mother's Day. Now, we here at Dish Nation found that celebrities love to talk about their moms, even when we don't ask. And here's a few of our favorite mom moments. Oh, my God. My mother is hysterical. Yeah, Everything she says is hysterical. Yeah, but does she know that comedy. she's hysterical? Yes. Yeah, oh, she knows my it, mom too. too. Yeah, they my milk that. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. She's the best. Yeah. They're, they're cute. They're really cute. Actually, our moms are yeah. kind of cute. They look similar. kind of like this. They same kind, kind of look similar. Yeah, yeah, blonde. And, yeah. She's hilarious. I would say that's probably the funniest. She's also like a fab dresser all the time. Really fantastic. And if you compliment her on anything, she'll say, $15, Marshalls. One time, Bill went to Denver because we were trying to have a baby, and he had to go, and I couldn't go. I just had surgery for breast cancer. So my mom was watching me, and she goes, where's Bill? And I couldn't think quick enough. So I go, he's in Denver skiing with his friends. And she goes, what? Your husband is skiing with his friends, and you're here getting surgery? And she see, Juliana, if you had married an Italian guy, this would never have happened. So, poor Bill. Happy Mother's Day, Connie Raspberry. I love you. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there, and especially a big Happy Mother's Day shout-out to my grandmother, Trudy, my mom, Elaine, my stepmom, Donna, and my other stepmom, Lourdes. I love y'all so much, and words can't describe the way I feel about y'all, but just know, I love you. Happy Mother's Day to my wife. Thank you for letting me try to make babies with you. That was fun. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, Dora Bell Mac. You're the reason I can take a punch. I want to say happy Mother's Day to my mama, Diane, my grandma, Iona, and my Aunt Darlene, and my other mommy, Lisa. I love you so much. I'm so blessed to have you in my life. And also, happy Mother's Day to all of you Dish Nation moms. Love you. Wardrobe provided by Robert Graham. Dish Nation. Hey, y'all. Make sure you don't miss a single laugh with Dish Nation. So make sure you click here to subscribe to our channel. Now, if you're already subscribed, you can just click on the other button for more of me and everyone else on the show, too, I guess.